Thailand, a tropical paradise. Or is it? themselves are very basic. Um, they're essentially bamboo and thatch structures uh, in largely quite isolated areas along the border. The smallest camp is about, currently it's about 3,000 people. And for, and for a while this used to be seen as the model. For 10 years this was a model. You had the Thai authorities just providing security at the border and you had the refugees essentially taking care of themselves, taking care of the day-to-day -day administration of the camps, taking care of new arrivals as they came in. And the role of the NGOs was just to provide minimum assistance, nothing that would be um, considered as a pull factor. So it was just a very basic. Um, and people thought this was a good thing because as soon as the situation within the country um, became normalized, it was assumed that people would be able to return back with very little assistance because their lives had been largely left intact because they'd come as whole communities. So you had villages that came across and they established themselves in camps around the village head. So you had whole communities together. It was not like uh, some of the war-torn areas where families are separated and you see a lot more single people coming across. This was very much whole communities coming into Thailand, fleeing ahead of the Burmese army as it came into these um, ethnic homelands. In 1949, when we had also together for the Karen and also the Burmese military, they started fighting. I am the refugee in the time. I run and I cannot stay in my village. When I get to Mesot uh, officer from UNHCR, he asked me, do you want to apply refugee? Do you want to go to that country? I'm told no. I don't want to go to US or Europe. I don't want to go to. Because you want to stay in Thailand? No, my native country is Burma. God created me Bamis, so I have to be Bamis. I'm 24 years old. Uh, I come from Burma, also known as Myanmar uh, in current state. Uh, my village name is Tigudo, and uh, I grew up in my village and when I was 13 years old I left my village, I left my village and came to refugee camps and I lived in refugee camps for seven years. You live in over there in Mela, right? And how long have you lived there for? The reason why we left Bamo was because of my father. And my father, he works as a manager in a restaurant in Bamo. And one day in 2007, 2008, Saffron Revolution, uh, he, he was taken photographed by accidentally 
with his two politician friends, they were like, they were they were against him, against they were they they against the government. So he knew that the government would also arrest my father. So we no longer. He said he we would no, he, we could no longer live in in our place, and we, we left the place. Just picked up and left your home and, yes. and came to Thailand. Yes. But then the, um, the situation changed as the Burmese army moved into and basically took control of the ethnic um, areas. You had a hostile Burmese army all along the border, and we started to see cross-border attacks. We saw 12 camps burnt down in a period of three years. So the Thai response was to consolidate the camps. We used to have 30 camps spread out along the border. They decided they couldn't manage the security, so they started to consolidate the camps and to contain people. The Thai authority they tried to reduce the camps. So now we have seven camps in Thai Burmese border along that area. Also, we, we have the 100,000 people, 130,000 people non staying in the refugee camp. Nobody knows what's going on over there, but I can say that it is one of the worst places in the world where human rights are being violated by the uh, government, the, by the Burmese government. I, because I, I want the forced labor killing to stop, no? I don't want Burmese people to kill my people because the political things, they, they kill the civilian. Mm -hmm. So I cannot face it. So do you think that every Karen pe person feels that way, or do you think that you are special in, in how you feel about making change happen? Not only me, many Karen people. But some of they don't have chance to do this, because they don't have ID card, they, they don't have any document things to work with the organization somehow. Sometimes most of the organizations, they need people who are legal because they have to travel. Suffice it to say that in order to get here, first to get out of your village when it's being burned, then to make your way across the border, and then to make your way into a refugee camp, and then to get signed up, and then to wait, and then to get in the right lines to be considered for third country resettlement, you cannot be stupid. You have to be resilient and you have to have a lot going for you. I go to Gadis can you out a continent that you my out of one? So, Pananita, how to Pananita, don't have this game and dig it. No, my love for Oh, yes, uh, I was a university student in 1988, and then the and do you know that the, we, my country got the uh, mass uprising in the 1980s, the Democratic Revolution? I am one of the participation student leaders, yeah. And then the 1988s, military took over in my country. The, we uh, all students flee into the jungle at a time from Ambora. สรอปาจองเลยอกูรู้ตรุอ่ะตีนแจมองทุกทาลาทาโมรู้ชิงอกูตรุอสุเอาตีนแจมไม่ปิรู้บ่ซิซุเอาตีนแจมไม่ปิ
ตัวเราเกยินดีเนี่ยวันนี้เลยเกยินดีเนี่ยวันนี้เราเกยินดีเนี่ยวันนี้เราตะขัดเลยตัวเราคนนี้เราเรียกว่าคนนี้เราเก